Good day children. So now we will be looking about the differences between the apical meristem, lateral meristem and the intercalary meristem. I hope you all remember the diagram in which we have spoken about the location of the apical meristems, lateral meristem and the intercalary meristems. Okay. Now the apical meristem it occurs in the tip of the roots and also the shoot and this is the only meristem that is found in the root of the plant. Okay. So this is the only meristem which is found in the roots of the plant. Now it is produced from the primary cells of the permanent tissues. So permanent tissues we have learned already. Let us recall the permanent tissues are formed from the meristematic tissues and they perform a particular function. And the apical meristem is responsible for the growth in the cryptograms like algae, bryophytes and also the pteridophytes. Now you will have a doubt ma'am. Does it does not allow the growth in the case of phenerograms? Yes, it does allow the growth in the phenerograms also. But major the cryptograms depend mainly on the apical meristems for its growth and the development. Okay, moving on to the lateral meristems. These meristems occur in the mature region. So it is not found in the growing region. It is found in the region where it has matured. And it produces the woody axis. They are also called as a secondary meristems and some lateral meristems are of primary origin like the fascicular vascular cambium. Now this important word that you find here that is the fascicular vascular cambium is quite tricky. Okay, so I will be telling about it in detail in the future classes. Okay, so next you have intercalary meristems. Some meristematic tissues are left behind from the shoot apical meristem. So get this point clear in the shoot apical meristem. So the apical meristems found in the shoot system are left behind and they form the intercalary meristem. So who is forming the intercalary meristem? The apical meristems are forming the intercalary meristems. They are responsible for the forming grasses that are being removed by the grazing herbivorous animals. So herbivorous animals have a tendency to graze on the uh, top layers of the grass okay of the plant right so they don't graze out the entire plant they just graze at the top and then they leave it so the grass then grows out due to the presence of the intercalary meristems so they are primary meristems held in the elongation of the stem now moving on to the basic differences between a primary meristem and a secondary meristem. Now we have seen you have primary meristems and the secondary meristems forming different types of meristematic cells. Now what are these actually? Now primary meristems originate from the embryo and the cells are isodermatric which we have seen already in the diagrams and they are fast dividing and hence they have no vacuole. So usually from the lower grades we draw the cells or the plant cell which are huge vacuole. Okay so whenever we are asked to draw a plant cell we draw two uh, rectangles and inside you draw a very big vacuole. So various uh, primary meristems are also plant cells but they don't have a vacuole. They are being formed from the primary or the permanent tissues. So best examples are the protodome procambium and the ground tissue. Now moving on to the secondary meristems. They originate from the primary meristems. So secondary meristems are what? They originate from the primary meristems. They are not formed from any other cells. From this you form the secondary meristems. The cells are generally elongated and they have a central vacuole and they form from the secondary or the supplementary tissues of the plant. So you are calling a secondary cells or it is also called as a supplementary tissues of the plant. Okay. Examples is the vascular cambium and the cork cambium. So these are referred to as what? Secondary meristems. Whereas protodome, procambium and the ground tissues are referred to as primary meristems. So with this we come to an end of the meristematic tissues. And the different types of meristems based on their origin, based on their location, based on their plane of division. And what is the uh, type of meristems found in different parts of the plant body also we have seen. So I hope you get a clarity about the entire topic about the meristems. So next class we will be talking about the permanent tissues. Okay children. Thank you.